Get on them travelers, that winter wind isn't gone yet. Greetings there travelers, welcome back to the end of the seven days. Uh, I really hope it starts warming up soon, I'm just getting kind of tired of winter. Being on the coast, we have winter for, oof, pretty much starts around October and then doesn't end till around May. It's not very fun. But I'm going to set up the fire, get it going a little bit bigger, so why don't you go warm up your ethereal self over by a wing over. Oh, greetings there, travelers. It's me, Wing Ever Gimbal, famous known bad. I'm so glad you could join us today. I do hope you enjoyed our tale from before. It was quite the quite the audio drama, I, I must say. We got to really dive into the, the nitty gritties of what's happening in Haymore, this this land that Draxia is from, and we're going to be entering into the the story right where essentially we left off with the audio drama uh, that's where uh, death shift's gonna be coming on in so i hope you're all ready for uh, quite a tale but uh before we get all started with that we have a little bit of fan mail let me just grab it right here great D D actual play podcast five stars one of my biggest hurdles in finding and enjoying new actual play podcasts is audio quality. Not to say that content isn't important, but I just have a hard time sticking with something that sounds awful. This quality immediately stood above most others, and the genre and the story hooked me too. I can't wait to hear where things go. Triple Booyah. Well, thank you very much, Triple Booyah. I wonder if they have siblings like Double Booyah and Single Booyah, or if it's just the lonely Triple Booyah. Thank you very much. Well, I'm glad that our audio quality is uh, is good and stands above uh, many others. Uh, I do understand that plight. All right, travelers. I think we also have someone here from Battle Bars. Where were they? There's a there's a chest here. Two wing over from Battle Bars. Watch, I'm gonna open it up. It's gonna be a bunch of those, those ridiculous snakes popping out, or, or someone yelling boo. All right, here we go. And... Oh, travelers, it is so much worse. Um, uh, okay, this is a, a soul that has been warped, twisted, and trapped to a rotting corpse. Uh, not like a zombie, this one seems to be sentient. It is now standing up. The glowing white-blue eyes are piercing right into my soul, and I do believe that the the uh, temperature in the room has gone down a few degrees. Are you from Battle Bads? Yes. I bring you a message from BattleBards.com. Go there for excellent music and sound effects. Fine sounds that will bring your stories to life. Find them at BattleBards.com. Well, travelers, um, I don't even know anymore. Like, I'm surprised. Don't get me wrong, I'm surprised. It's horrifying and it smells horrific. Uh, the soul just ripped away from the body. I, I do believe they attached a soul to a rotten corpse and sent it here to deliver the promo message for Battle Bards. So check them out. They were supposed to play the music and stuff. Uh, all right, all right. Yes, well, check out Battle Bards. Uh, and maybe they'll send an intern your way in a box. I, I don't know. Uh, but travelers, where were we? Oh, yes. So, we have just come back to Death Shift. They got equipped with all sorts of fancy new goods, and they're getting ready to make their way to Hamor, the land where Draxir is from. So, I don't want to hold you anymore. Let's carry on with A War Stricken World, Part 2. Hey, I'm Bright, and I'm playing Kalsar, 
the Tiefling Paladin and Chosen of Yetifa. Hi, uh, I'm Humberto and I'm playing Bordon, Dwarven Cleric and Chosen of Time. I'm Evan and I'm playing Ronnie, the Half Elf Bard and Chosen of Chaos. Hey, I'm Robert, and I'm playing MZ, the Gith Yankee Ranger, and Chosen Blood. Hey, I'm Jason, and I'll be playing Drax here, the Dragonborn Artificer, and Chosen of Machines. on Battle of the Seven Dice. Our heroes, after just returning from Tul Narath, got some much needed rest and recuperation. After getting their clothes and equipment cleaned, they talked to a few at the chosen MZ headquarters. has some new cool items. Draxier's all decked out new gear and board has got some booties. <laughs> As the chosen you know were starting it. to gear up for the end. I think you asked uh, Elbito if the there was a place that you could store the horn. Out out and they did any more of this. Ronnie has an area cave. down below that they could store the horn if you'd like, or you could choose to keep it on you. So we'll pick up where you're all just kind of uh, in in sort of the main area. You're trying on a lot of different gear, like kind of picking things up from the pile. Like, ah, now this won't work. This will work. And now you're all standing there. And it's like that classic video game moment where your character like looks to the right, looks to the left, like looks down like, whoa. And then they get ready for combat. Well, do we want to go talk to Astoria before we head out? Shouldn't we first talk? Like, are we taking the horn with us? Isn't isn't it like extremely dangerous? That could probably be part of the conversation. Sure, if you want to bring that up uh, to her, maybe she wants like to analyze the horn first. Yeah, I think we need it, don't we? Do we? I th- I think we need it to kill uh, Dorum. I mean, it's just raw power, right? Isn't it one of the items that we need to kill uh, kill Dorum? Yes. But at the same time, I don't think we should, like, be taking it everywhere we go. So I just want, like, uh, Elvito to store it for us, at least for now. Kind of like a safety deposit box. Yeah, because, I mean, l- let's say that the party split up. Not that this ever happened, um, but let's say, like, in this completely <laughs> hypothetical situation, like, some of us get caught... I don't know, maybe guards takes our possessions and whatnot. So maybe storing those items here maybe would be for the best because at least we know what to expect uh, from this world. I agree. It'd be good to have it kept safely somewhere if possible. Albedo's kind of floating there, their giant jellyfish-like self. I can store the horn for you if you'd like. There's chambers below that I can place it in. I think that would be good as long as it's quite secure and no one else would be able to get in there. Yeah, I'll hand over the horn. So you take the horn out and it's got like some cloth wrapped around it and it just kind of like levitates into the air as Albedo takes it and you just see them, they kind of form away like a little bit like kind of like a jellyfish squoosh as they, they float away with this horn you see them, they go off down a hallway towards Elvin and Astoria's offices. Bordon and Ronnie, you both went down that way before. And that was when you like went down below. Mm-hmm. There was like prisoners that they were guarding, that kind of stuff. When you went down with the detective, mm-hmm. they had like cells down there and stuff. So you, know, you can tell that's where Albedo's going. Let's go to a story then. Yeah, I think it'd be good to get a story up to speed. Okay. So you all march down the hallway. Doesn't take very long. You look, you see Elwyn's room has been kind of cleared up as you're walking past it, and you actually see Astoria's in there. She has, like, a a couple crutches that are off to the side near her, and she's just, like, parsing through a number of books that are around her. She has, like, three or four of them open, and she's scanning over them, and she's wearing those glasses that Elwyn always had on that let him read really fast. She looks up. Oh, Death Shift. You're back. Draxir. 
MZ, did you die again? Yes, it was a very dangerous fight, I'm sure. MZ could tell you more about his mother, but she's extremely powerful, and unfortunately we lost one of our lives there. You fought the Githyanki Queen? Was. Right, guys? Yeah. Yeah, we did. Yeah. She was very powerful. You defeated her? But surely she'll she'll be rising again. She's a lich. Her phylactery, I... I mean, no one knows where it is. So many have tried to kill her. She put it inside me. And then when she killed me, she killed herself. I don't know for certain if she has more than one phylactrophy. I don't know if she would put all her eggs in one basket. But for now, she's dead. Wait, I thought she was, like, dead for real. So she's not. She might be. I guess my character doesn't actually know that, but... Usually powerful liches don't just have one phylactrophy hidden somewhere. Usually it's, like split up into three or something. Split the soul up. The thing is, when she loses one, that's like a chunk of her powers that sets her back pretty heavy. Yeah, yeah, it definitely hurts. Okay, so when she comes back, if she comes back, then we can just, like, punch her to oblivion. That's another campaign. (laughs) Yeah. 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 (laughs) Well, that's... I mean, that's great news, MZ. That means you're you're going to be safe, at least for the time being. Um, how how were things there? Did you did you get everything you needed while you were at home? For the most part, I think a civil war is going to break out. <laughs> well, I, I suppose you've all seen the sky, correct? When this happened, uh, a name lays through my mind. I I've never heard it before, but it's known as Azathoth. I believe that's the force behind this shining god and this cult. We have no records of this being. There's absolutely nothing. We've been pouring through every book we have, and I I don't know what to do. Did the king in yellow mention Azathoth when we spoke to him? Yes. Okay. And he showed you the vision of, like, Dorm and her group of the Sacred Flame when they went and awoken Azathoth by taking the instruments. I'll just say, like... You're probably right. The king in yellow mentioned that name when we saw him and spoke to him. Who's the king in yellow? Well, when we went to Welshire, as you know, we after we killed Oblivion in Welshire and we went to that play, sort of magical effect that came over us and seemed like we sort of teleported through worlds or something, and we ended up speaking to this deity, the king in yellow which I suppose you could consider our benefactor. You mean they're the one behind the parasite? I believe so. That's... I mean, that's news. We've been... Since the beginning, we've been trying to figure out who's given us these. Aside from Truth, of course. We all knew that Truth was just a liaison of sorts. Interesting. So the King in Yellow showed you information about this Azathoth? Yes. I I don't remember what... The King in Yellow actually said it's been too long. (laughs) Uh, Basically, like, you need the three instruments to put Azathoth back to sleep, and there's no killing Azathoth, there's just putting them back to bed. Okay. That's right, and it was the horn, the harp. Yep. And then... AR-15. The drum. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) AR-15. The American instrument of choice. Um... (laughs) All our American <laughs> listeners out there. Just a sport right there. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, yeah, so you needed the the horn, the harp, and the drum, and currently you have the horn. So one of those instruments that's being stored in the basement is uh, required to put this Azathoth back to sleep. Well, it seems you've all been very busy. Although it's this information you've gathered looks like it's come at a cost. Do we have any information on this, uh, the harp and the drum? We don't really know where the drum is, but I believe the harp is in my home world, in Haymore. Well, that's that's good. We have some information. We can start looking into the drum. We're in Elwyn's room right now, right? Yeah. So I'll just say, uh, speaking of cost, mm. this is my fault. 
What do you mean? When we saw the king in yellow, he gave us an ultimatum of sorts that we could sacrifice one of our lives and some other life in exchange to restore yours. I took that deal, and that's why Elwyn is dead. Did he tell you that Elwyn would die? He said someone, but wouldn't specify who. She kind of collapses a bit back in the, her chair. She's looking forward. She looks a little, a little lost. He... He was one of my closest friends. I don't, I don't blame you at all, Jackson. This isn't your fault. I mean, I couldn't have known. Just kind of like steals her resolve a little bit and straightens up. You see her eyes are tearing up a little. Well, let's, let's just make sure his sacrifice wasn't in vain. Of course, we believe that we've already prevented I suppose you from becoming a very powerful corrupted so there's at least that there I think I know the moment that Elwyn passed Dorum made it into here while you were all gone it must have been while you were in Welshire she had come into my room and was planning on finishing me off I guess putting me out of my misery is how she viewed it as she was in the process of killing me, I heard Elwyn's voice, and she quickly left. And then I i just fell back asleep. I didn't have any energy to stay awake. I guess that must have been around the time. Sorry about Elwyn. This war has taken everything from me. My home... My wife, my friends. Couldn't we just resurrect him? No. Anyone with these symbols were not able to be resurrected. He was also a chosen. So, you guys had to kill him. You guys had to fight him and kill him. No, he was just gone. I heard Truth's voice, I heard Elwyn, and then he was gone. So, wait, so there's no body? No. When the King in Yellow told you about this choice, he said that if it landed on a Chosen, it wouldn't result in a Corrupted. Yeah, it's kind of like the parameter of the deal. No Corrupteds. Well, sure, but wouldn't it, like, at least leave a body? Like, he was he just... Because, like, he wasn't erased from this timeline, because we remember him. That's right. But there was, there was no body at all. Well, Nothing. No. Good. Good. No body's better than a body, right? So, so, hear me out. After all these, like, like all these shenanigans that we're going through, if the king, the king in yellow, allows like one wish, I don't know, or just like granting something to us, we can just ask um, for Elwin to be brought back. I mean, I'm, he's probably. Like, he probably didn't finish. He's probably just, like, somewhere. I mean, the King Yellow is powerful enough to, you know, just to bring him back, I'm, I'm sure. Yes, I, I suppose he could do that. Elwyn had actually come from a previous war. Another one of these Mythos Wars where they actually lost. The world was destroyed. Him, Elbido, and Joffrey, they barely managed to get out of there alive. And they came to this world, and they've been helping us fight in this war. He's been alive for a long time, but for now, let's... We should focus on this harp and the drum. By the way, we have store like the horn, so we just gave it to Elbido, and um, Elbido stored it like in an underground vault so if you want to just be careful the horn is it is extremely powerful and according to MZ it has like the power of hell if I'm not mistaken so it's in there be careful because like it's sort of like seductive 
but if you want to just check it you know see see if you can because like we sort of don't know like how to use it it sort of like took control of Kelsar almost took control of, of MZ as well so maybe hmm. uh, like like while we're um, when we're going like to Drexir's um, like dimension maybe you can check it or something I'll do some research on it I'm feeling stronger now I'll see if Elvito can help me get down there and I'll uh, try to see what I can find out when are you all heading to Drexir's world? as soon as possible yes we're planning to go quite soon okay I do have a question though if you happen to know our plan is to pinpoint the exact location of where I believe the harp will be when we teleport there I was just wondering do you know a way that we could recharge this gauntlet immediately afterwards so we can make it back hopefully undetected hmm <sighs> Do you mind if I see the gauntlet? I don't know who actually has it right now. Kelsar, you yeah. like Kelsar. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So Kelsar holds out his arm, and she's looking over it. She's casting a few spells as she's moving her hand over. Well, it requires a, a large magical force. There was a natural magical area, like a ley line, a druidic grove, a naturally occurring portal this would be able to recharge. It could recharge with a powerful teleportation spell. It would just absorb it and destroy the portal that was there, cast from it. I can see about getting you a scroll that could possibly help with this. Like, we do have our portable teleporter. Wait, he also has a name, like, that's, um, Ronnie, right? No. <laughs> You could try to use your own powers to try to power this up. And if, maybe if you even focused and aided one another, you might be able to do so more effectively. Well, Ronnie, how teleporty are you feeling? <sighs> oh, that's a good... Uh... Hmm. <laughs> well, I, you know, uh, well, I could, I could give it a shot... All right, uh, let me just power up real quick. <laughs> <laughs> quick JoJo stance. <laughs> Three episodes later. And talk to Lucas in the gaming channel for a sec. Lucas, go to the gaming channel. Okay. Uh, so what do I... I want to roll like a deception-y type thing. What I'm going to roll is a... Fuck, where did my character sheet go? Because I have Prestidigitation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast Prestidigitation and roll Deception to make it look like a failed spell. Okay. I'm just going to use their passive perceptions to see if they can see through it, okay? Okay. So um, just message me, or just roll now and tell me what you get. I was wondering when this is going to come up. Critical miss. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> this is going to be yeah. super obvious so I, I think you know how to roll with this <laughs> alright so I go and I uh, and I uh, I'm going to go teleport and uh, I don't even know what happens Lucas what happens <laughs> what happens in this situation <laughs> You see Ronnie hold out his, his hands. He starts doing, like, strange gestures. Like, he's kind of doing, like, that weird, uh, like, uh, dance that everybody loved doing in the early 90s, where they're just kind of, like, slowly swaying side to side. And then you see him clearly cast a little, like, minor illusion to, like, make a tiny puff of smoke. Kind of, like, at his feet, you know, like, the classic, like, ha ha! And uh, he's still there. So he didn't teleport at all. So he's useless well, now. Uh, <laughs> Ronnie, it, was that prestidigitation? Uh, yeah, I just need to. Uh, I just need to pump myself up a bit there. Uh, you know, uh, recently I haven't really been able to teleport all that well. <laughs> um, what what's happened? That's one of your abilities, isn't it? 
I, you know, uh, used to be. <laughs> used to be. It might have gotten taken away. What? I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say it is this, like, that's the case, but maybe you are, like, extremely unstable. Now. That, that sounds like that could definitely be it. And that's kind of dangerous, because you are clearly, even though, like, it hurts me to say that, you are clearly, like, the <laughs> strongest among us. So you're, like, a time bomb, or, like, a living bomb or something. I guess... Try not to push yourself, <laughs> Ron. <Robert. laughs> yeah. Breathe slowly. Yeah, don't fart. Be careful. Yeah, just... <laughs> if you see the enemy, just run at them. I don't... I'm not sure. He's definitely going to be the hero of this story. It's all going to be about him. <laughs> I'm just going to... I'm. Yeah, no, that's... I think maybe if we run into some big monsters, I'll just leave it to... I'll just leave it to literally anyone else. <laughs> Don't ruin any of those sequins, Ronnie. <laughs> okay, so Ronnie's powers are out of whack at the moment. We have a strange being that consumed a third of the planet, and we have a horn tied to hell in our basement. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess it's this is progress. <laughs> I'm not sure, but yeah, it's backwards progress, I guess. But. I, I have a scroll here, and she pulls one out of, out of her super sweet mage robe sleeves, because that's just how mage robes work. And she hands it to you, Draxir. This will cast a strong portal. You can choose where. Of course, it's not an interdimensional one. It's just one to travel great distances. You could use it to try to recharge the, the bracer. Thank you. Hopefully... This works and will return without a scratch. I I would be thrilled if that were the case. Be careful when you go there. I don't know what you'll you'll see. You've been away from your home world for a while, Drax here, and as you know, time moves differently in different worlds. Right, well hoping to not spend much time there, so hopefully it won't affect me too much. Thank you, Astoria. Of course. And thank you for bringing this information to me. Although some of it is a bit heavy, a lot of this is very useful. If we can locate this drum, if we can get all three instruments, then it's just finding a way to put this creature to sleep. Already its tentacles are ripping into this planet. The shockwave that went through, we had discovered, was actually a number of gods dying. When that creature broke through the shield that was around the planet, it had consumed a number of gods. Still, many of them are alive. Bordon Dumathoin is one of them among the living. That's why you still have your powers. I, I may or may not have known that for, for quite a while. Well, I, <laughs> the rest of you now know. Yeah. The gods are doing what they can to buy us time. You actually did that relatively quickly after that attack or whatever happened. Like, you immediately reached out to Dumathoin not, not long after. It was pretty smart. Oh yeah, because he felt his powers go away for like a yeah. minute, and then they came back, and then it freaked him out. Yeah, but they're like I've talked to him prior to that. Yeah, I mean I would sort of expect that, because we don't have a lot of time for us to solve, like to find all the artifacts. So it's sort of like expected for the gods to start to get weaker and um, even like as we are seeing, possibly dying. If we can manage to put this creature back to sleep, I don't know what we could do for this world, but at the very least we'll be saving the rest of them. This is a battlefield. If you need more time, take it. Of course, don't take a month-long vacation, but if you need a day or two, by all means, you have this kind of time. But if you wish to head off to Haymore now, then you are, of course, free to go. Alright. I think we should just go, like, as soon as possible. Draxir, where are you planning on targeting the teleportation spell? The the bracer? I know that uh, King Leolin has like a sort of treasure room of sorts, slash vanity room that he likes to upkeep. Definitely. And I may or may not have seen the harp in there in the past. I don't know. I don't know if that's a little... Yeah, no, I, I think he... 
he's bold enough to try to show it off to everyone. Anyone who comes into the castle, he would be like, this is my harp. Yeah, he's very vain. And he's all about the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's Ronnie as the king. So if we're ready to go, I do have a plan. So I find, I don't know, we'll say there's like one of those little rolly stools around somewhere. Mm-hmm. I pull it up to, to Uhtred and open a panel on Uhtred and out pops a keyboard. Mm-hmm. I'm going to run with this. Tell me when it's too far. <laughs> Honestly, I've had spaceships show up in this story. So okay. Like... Go for it. <laughs> I start hitting some buttons, typing some stuff in, loading up my uh, my little geocoding APIs. You see a little topographical map pop up. You know, I'm just calculating a few things and figuring out exactly where we want to go in interdimensional coordinates. Mm -hmm. And uh, after a couple of minutes, I come up with my little result and I uh, tune the bracer to teleport us there. So Uther disconnected to the internet? Hey, I imagine it's more of like uh, like Drax here just like, he's been working on this for a number of years it's like the map he knows of Haymore so then he just kinda you know, he's been tinkering with it. Uhtred's had some upgrades. He's just blown up enough times. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> I think I've blown up Uhtred like three times so Yeah, so I'm, I'm, using, I'm using that to justify my flash of genius on this check. Okay. I like it. It's good. Okay, so that was a nat 20, and with Flash of Genius, <laughs> I also get a plus 14, so it's like, there's no way that can fail. Alright, so, you all end up in hell. No. <laughs> so you, <laughs> you all grasp on, you do like the, the Power Rangers thing, like all your, your fists in the middle, and then like there's the bracer, and you feel yourselves just be ripped through this uh, this portal that Draxir has has targeted you feel yourselves flying there's like the pit in your stomach just drops you're looking around it's just like colors and shapes and swirls are all passing around you in this strange tube of light you feel yourself just hurtling at unreal speeds you pass by planets and moons and you're sailing through and eventually you see this little dot is appearing larger and larger and larger until it's this large planet. You're passing through the atmosphere, you pass through clouds, you look down on this large continent and it, a lot of it is like brownish uh, colors. It looks like a lot of the land has been really messed with. You feel yourself hurtling through the sky. You start like narrowing in on this area where it looks like it's a walled city. And off in the distance, you see another like keep that's up on uh, a cliff, and it's all like black and it has these walls around it. You are hurtling towards this city, and then in the city, it starts focusing more on a castle that's there. You are hurtling towards this castle when all of you see something, something that takes you away from uh, this hurtling speed, these amazing things that are flying by you. You see a man standing on top of the castle. This man is dressed in royal robes. He has his hair flying back, this blonde hair. He's smiling, and he's playing a harp. You watch him play this harp while he has a number of other uh, people who look of nobility, and they're all clapping and being like, ha, 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 good show, good show. As he's playing it, you watch this energy build up around the castle as it launches out this tsunami of white energy Bordon, you can feel it in the air. This is celestial energy. They have somehow harnessed the powers of the angels. As you watch it going out towards another one of... I guess it would be like towards the east, and Draxir, you know that's towards the kingdom of Bane. You watch the tsunami of energy just keep flowing. It goes over a few small towns that were in your country and leaving nothing behind as it just slams into all the town cities everything of this kingdom of bane as you're watching your your bird's eye view just complete and utter destruction you turn back towards the man with the harp as he's smiling and he's clapping for himself and you see the ministers and nobility that were all around him are lying there their eyes are all like they've exploded they're bleeding down they have blood coming from their ears nose mouth and you 
hurl into the castle and through like the tiniest of doors and suddenly you find yourselves in this treasury room and it, you're you're like really high up in the castle because the king likes to keep his treasure safe and sound near his room of course so that he can just walk over there and look at his stuff and go back to bed so you're near the roof of course and you you're in here and because Drax you rolled so well you didn't just smash through the wall and alert every person in the kingdom it was still a streak of light, but there was so much light and everything going on that you didn't even really cause too much attention drawn to yourselves. And now you're all standing in this treasure room. You're surrounded by gold, jewels, incredibly elaborate tapestries. There's like suits of armor that are all like gem encrusted and covered in jewels. And you see like a sword and shield are off to the side with the king- kingdom's insignia on it. We actually like properly saw the harp on the roof and everything. Yeah, you saw the king playing it. Then everyone who was around the king is dead. Well, I guess Leolin took it a step further and decided to just kill people all willy-nilly. Pretty sure that was the harp. I don't know if you guys want to hide out in the treasury room. I think he would bring it back here at some point, or do we go on the offensive here? So my concern is that if the harp is as sentient as the horn and we have seen like how strong the harp is we would probably like the harp would probably alert the king that we are here that's that's just like a it's just a guess but i mean the harp is extremely powerful right so you think we'll be detected no matter what we do i mean yeah i, I yeah that's insane so he has has never used like this harp before? Not while I was around. Lucas is like since it's like a more technological planet, does it have like a clock with like time and date? Oh yeah, he has a clock that like it's been fitted into a picture of himself. It's like his two arms are the hands of time, like he's controlling time. And uh, does it have a, like an ear as well? No, it, it's a it's a mechanical one. So a lot of the the tech here is leaning more towards like steam and there's some electricity. They use a lot of magic in place of electricity, so they can create like some things like holograms and stuff like that, like with like rough illusion spells with magic uh, with technology. But they don't have like super sci-fi stuff here. Think of it kind of. I mean, calendars are not like super sci-fi. No, but he doesn't have it integrated into his clock, is what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Because what I was going to, to say is just, like, ask uh, when Drexir has left and which year we are now. I'm just, like, trying to make a parallel, like, yeah. what triggered the king to start using the harp. Did we see, like, because he played the harp and, mm-hmm. like, this wave, it went like into one direction right and yeah. like it started destroying everything yeah did we get the like a glimpse of like the other side as well like maybe he like destroyed like the cities on the other side or is it like the first time he's using it you saw a lot of the areas look very worn torn but it's not so much like from this harp it looks like mm-hmm. everything was war torn more from like just other kind of different attacks It looks like a lot of these areas have been sieged before. A lot of the terrain in the areas have been, like, trees have been ripped out. Everything's just, like, muddy fields, that kind of thing. A lot of trenches. This is probably the first time he's using this harp. So something triggered it, right? Like, something triggered him to use this harp. So maybe because we got the horn, and uh, maybe, like, those artifacts, like, they are connected, and uh, they... Like, the artifacts maybe know that we're coming for them now. It's just a guess. But... Yeah. The the instruments, I mean, they would need to make sound to work, right? More or less? Okay. You are the bard here. Makes sense. I don't think harps work underwater. So, if you just, like, flooded the whole place... I need a source of water, though. But, yeah, it's achievable. Yeah. Do you guys breathe underwater? Because I don't. <laughs> Ronnie, make me a constitution saving throw. 
13. Take 11 points of damage. You see as Ronnie, like, you can almost see, like, a bit of, like, like life energy trickling from him, and it's just going towards the ceiling. And all of you see that, that kind of, like, snaps you out of what you were just talking about. You could feel in the air, because normally, with the different worlds you've been on, planets, magic is always a constant, right? There's always magic in the air. It's not something you can see, but it's something that casters can feel. And in this area, it feels sick. It feels like the magic here is... It's not all there. Like, a portion of it has been ripped away, and the rest of it is just left stale. And it just feels gross. Drax here, you knew that the magic pollution was pretty bad, but it feels like it's even worse than it was before. We've had a problem for a long time with this magical pollution, but I suppose the rising lust for power and blood with these four kings has caused the problem to grow even worse. Would it hurt Ronnie? It seemed to only affect him. It seemed to, like, kind of rip away life force from him. Maybe Ronnie's allergic. He's a very magical man. <laughs> Borodon's a pretty magical man, too. Are you, uh, are you okay, Ronnie? Oh, I felt, felt better. I don't... <laughs> <coughs> uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what that was. Um, maybe I'll just go. Uh, I'll just go take a take a sit for a second here. Yeah, you don't look too good. Yeah, there's like a gold little stool. As he goes to sit, I go and uh, pat him on the shoulder and cast uh, level one cure wounds on him. Sweet. That's one d eight plus five. Half the amount that you heal, Ronnie. Uh, so he heals for four. Okay. You go to cast the spell, Drax, here, and you know that there was more power there. You see, like, a little bit of it, like, it trickles away, and you guys watch as, like, this energy, like, floats up through the ceiling, and it seems to, like, just go through the stonework. Probably the harp is absorbing this power. Like, any magic. It definitely seems like something's absorbing magic in here. Can we overload this harp? Yeah, baby. Okay, so a little bit of essence leaves Ronnie. Some essence leaves uh, from Draxir's spell. I kind of look at Ororon. Does he... Is anything... Does, like, Ro okay, Ronnie's, Ronnie's obviously magical then, right? The three of you don't seem to be affected... You're all okay. You, you feel fine. Like, the air feels gross, if that makes sense. It's kind of like if you walked into a room that it, it had a vacuum seal on it for years, and then you open up, and it's just, like, stale, stagnant. It's super gross. But you feel okay other than that. You're surrounded by a lot of wealth. Bored on, it feels like home. <laughs> <laughs> Would this treasure room have, like, anything magical that we could use? I, I just turned to Drax here, like, do you guys have like, magical magic weapons here? Mm, I can't say, I can't say I've spent a lot of time in here, but it might be worth a quick look anyways. No, but, like, generally speaking, like in your world. We have plenty, a lot of people, like me, are artificers in Hamor, and tend to imbue weapons with magic properties for the foot soldiers to use. How much gems and stuff are in here? Thousands upon thousands of gold's worth. I'm gonna take some <laughs> gems. <laughs> I'm taking... Shoveling it. Because you got the bag of holding, right? So you're just like yeah. piling it in. Do I have the bag of holding or does somebody else have it? One of you does. I'm pretty sure it was you. Well, I mean, we should definitely be trying to get that harp in the bag of holding, right? Yeah, definitely. And I'm gonna... Yeah. As I'm saying yeah. that... If I have the bag of holding, like, I'm <laughs> shoveling as much as I can in there. Yeah. Well, you're all talking, like, MC's going, like, yeah, like, for sure. As he's, like, grabbing handfuls of stuff and just, like, grabs, like, a goblet that has gems on it. He's like, that looks good. Like, just shoving everything. I got a question. Mm hmm I don't remember if there's a thing about this. You can't put people in the bag of holding, right? And there's not enough air. Yeah. They'll, they'll suffocate. Oh, that's what it is. Okay, fuck. We are, we are now Ballad of the Seven Heist. 
Well, no, I wanted, I wanted to, I wanted to go inside the bag so I wasn't taking damage anymore. Mm. You'll, you'll die another way. Hmm. <laughs> what's, what's that uh, one, one spell where it, like makes um, an extra dimensional space that you can enter? Oh, the tiny hut. Yeah, tiny. Le- is it tiny hut? Leoman's tiny hut, I think. There's another one where you literally go in, like into a portal, and it's like an extra little dimension too. Yeah, that's like the something something step, something like that, where you're like out of it for a turn. Oh, ethereal step. Ethereal, yeah. Yeah. yeah MZ has that as a special ability, but it only works mm-hmm. on himself. So, I I thought that we were going to do like this mission, like in a more stealthy way, like in a subtle way. Instead, now we're just like pillaging. Uh, like the stealing, uh, like the treasures. I mean, stealth and stealing go together. What are you talking about? I I understand that we're taking stuff that doesn't belong to us, but this is also funds for us. So I don't mind. Okay. I don't mind. You guys can take as much as you want. What I'm saying. I didn't even think about this. Yeah. <laughs> You're just getting rich right now. It's like the money chain. Yeah. What I'm saying is, I thought maybe we should get like the heart first. Definitely. And then, because like I'm quite sure, like the DM, what will happen is we'll get the harp, we will put the harp inside the bag of holding, and all the jewels, all the gems, all the coins, all the treasure, it's just going to explode, melt. Or whatever. Um, Melt is not that bad, but like, it would just disappear because, of course, the GM wouldn't want us to be rich, like filthy rich. Honestly, you you can have this money. (laughs) This was Uh smart. Okay, how much money? How much money? I'm gonna write it down. You you all thought out a plan, and your plan worked. Just give it to me in gems to make (laughs) it easier. (laughs) How much? Just 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 add a one. I like on the front and eight zeros. <laughs> okay, I'll say you have acquired seventy six thousand. Nice. And your bag of holdings full. There's nothing like you could take stuff out to put stuff in. Seventy six thousand in gems slash gold. Yeah, his bag of holding. They all have like a weight limit, right? Yeah. So basically, MZ filled up the weight limit on money. So now you just gotta spend the money. Perfect. And there's still a lot in here. Is there? There's like, MZ like went to a corner and like just like piled a bunch in, but this is like Scrooge McDuck's room. We're rich. Let's go. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's go back. Yeah. Done. Game over. Lucas, I, I wanted to figure out like where the harp was being stored. Well, I'll tell you. Uh, you see. Ronnie, make another constitution saving throw. We've got a six. All right, you take another 13 points of damage and you watch the energy leave Ronnie. And this time, instead of going straight up, it seems to be going a little more like diagonal. I think we need mm-hmm. to hurry up and do whatever mm-hmm. it is we need to do. Just follow the lifeblood. Yeah. Do I have potions? Did I take potions? Yeah, I think we have to follow the Ronnie tether. Okay, well, someone heal me so I don't die first. The the guys, I think you should have some potions. I think, like, you've never really used them. I think I do. I don't know if I... I don't know if I already brought it down, though. But I think someone must. But... It's just, like, 13 points of damage. Yeah. yeah. Walk that shit off. bleeding. How many potions do I have? <laughs> I don't think you ever explicitly say when we get potions, Lucas. I think it's very rare. I think I gave potions a lot in the beginning, and then you all gained the ability to heal, and it just was kind of pointless for me to give you potions. Yeah, I don't have any potions in my inventory. I don't have any either. We'll say, Ronnie, you can have a a potion of greater healing on you. Okay. Okay, we should do something, though, because Ronnie's just going to die if we stand here talking. So what I wanted to do was to... uh meld into stone sure so I would just be like close to the harp and just wait for like the harp to be placed there just grab the harp and then leave yeah we'll say there's definitely like a little a little shrine that he's made the harp and it has like two throw pillows with like him on him 
and then, you know, the harp is sat between them. It will take like 10 minutes for me to do the ritual, so maybe I don't have 10 minutes. You could try it. So that's what I'm going to try. Like, are we are we certain that the harp is going to get placed in here? It's either that or we get uh, MZ to cast his famous pass without trace and we all hide. <laughs> Works too. Basically, I want to know is, if Bordon's going to go ahead with the ritual, what are the three of you doing? Do, can I do first aid on myself to just, like, constantly be throwing bandages on myself? You're not really bleeding, is the problem. You're kind of like... It's like your life force is being drained away. You're looking kind of gone. Hmm. This... Tr- uh, I guess this is, like, treasure, not... Uh... Lucas, how many doors are, like, in this room? One. Can I put, like, Garden of Faith there? Yes. The pillar kind of thing that shoots the beam? I mean, I, I don't know. I'm just going to talk to the group. If you guys think that's, like, a good idea. Or if, if we're going to take, like, a more, like, stealthy approach. I think we should be stealthy. I think worst case scenario, something that might work if Bordon stretches his powers is to... Uh, cast stop on the kind of like all the particles of air around the harp because without that being able to vibrate the sound wouldn't penetrate that kind of area you know what I mean that's very true that's just fancy words I don't I don't understand Uh, the sound has to like (laughs) vibrate no I'm I'm okay Okay. he's basically saying change the temperature to zero kelvin but using time instead of pretty much a cooler. <laughs> <laughs> like, right. I, I was going to say I could cast Rhea Frost, but I doubt that that goes to zero Kelvin, right? No. Probably not. I don't know if I can stop time. I Because mean, it's like, sort of like a very strong spell. Maybe. But I can slow time. That's for sure. Because mm-hmm. I can make people mm-hmm. faster. But we need to find the thing first, right? Before we worry about that. And it's up on the roof. Not anymore. It's it's like going downstairs, probably into this room it as we speak. Move. So I need to know right now, because now, MZ, your ears are insane. You can hear things from quite a ways away with your 21 passive perception. You can hear footsteps coming towards this room in a hmm, 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 hmm. Borodon, you have that cloak, right, that I gave you? I do. Okay, someone's coming. We need to hide. I make a hide check. Okay. My cloak gives me advantage on... On stealth. Oh, but that's in dark settings. Yeah. You can cast darkness with that cloak, though. But then it's very obvious that someone's in here. I'm gonna make a hide check, or a stealth check, I guess. But I'm gonna use my boots of flying, and I'm gonna, like... Mm-hmm. Up onto the roof. I got it. I can do oh it for. Th- oh, I can do it yeah. for thirty minutes. So I'm gonna make a hide check doing that. I'm just like, Ooh. smart. Okay, L- Lucas. I'm going to do yeah. this same hide check. There's a lot of gold around here. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm gonna uh, use my gold suit <laughs> for <laughs> camouflage. <laughs> You're gonna be the dragon, <laughs> and I'm yeah. going to oh, hide Lord. under. Find a pile of gold to hide under. Okay, yeah. And also I'm chugging this potion. (laughs) That works. I'm going to find, like, a... I don't know, like, the best place to hide and keep, like, doing the... Like, the meld into stone ritual there. Yep. So maybe I can just... There's, like, a giant pile of gold you can, like, slink behind in, like, a large chair or something. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to do that. I'm, like, small enough. You're a dwarf, yeah. Here. What about you, Draxir and Uhtred? I guess I'm going to heap up some gold if there's a good pile close to, like, a corner. Kind of similar to what Borodon's going to do. I don't really know how I can hide any other way. All right, everyone make me stealth checks. I got a 20 altogether. Oh, my God. I got another nat 20. I got a 10. Fuck, I got a 9. You heard me when I said I chugged that potion, right? So roll a 3d4. You heal yourself. Um, plus four. Okay. Fuck. 
this guy comes in. You see him. He looks like a he's an elf. He's fairly light skin, long blonde hair. He has this harp. He's kind of like just dancing a little bit with it. He's smiling. There's splats of blood all over him. You see this harp is like vibrating in his hands. He walks over to his little stand that he has the harp on. He sets it down. He's like, oh, that looks good. And he goes to leave. And you watch as he trips over Ronnie's ankle. And he stumbles onto the ground like, ow! (laughs) He rolls and goes, who the hell are you? You son of a bitch. You know, travelers, I've heard people called many things, but Gold Baby is probably the the first time I've ever heard that used in a sentence. Uh, but honestly, at that point, it makes sense, Ronnie trying to blend in with all the gold. But they're rich now. Ooh, all that money, Death Shift could really start up an industry. All they have to do is take care of this uh, horrific evil that's trying to consume the entire planet, and as long as they get that wrapped up, then yeah, they could... They can use that serious bank and make something cool. Very excited to see where that money will go. Or if they'll remember it. Uh, Travelers, if you wish to support the Ballad of the Seven Dice, there are many ways you can do so. Head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash ballad seven dice. And for as little as a dollar, you gain access to hours of one-shots, audio dramas, extra audio goodies, character journals, and so much more and the funds go right back into helping out the show paying for hosting equipment and all that good stuff that helps us continue making ballad the show that you know and love we also have a merch store if you're interested you want a sweet death shift t-shirt or a ballad of the seven dice t-shirt we have some rise of nyarlathotep merch there head on over to our website ballad of the seven dice.com slash store and that'll take you Right there, you will go and transport yourself on over. It's our threadless store, and we have all sorts of designs there for you to look over, including a musical one by me, Winger, the Gimbal famous name, Bad. All right, travelers. Oh, this has been a lot of talking for me, so I am ready to go sit by the fire, because it's kind of chilly out. Oh, oh, i got to clean up this corpse. All right, travelers, that'll be all from me. I bid you all, it's you. Michael, where's the broom? Yes, I bring you a message from BattleBards.com. Go there for excellent music and sound effects. Fine sounds that will bring your stories to life. Find them at BattleBards.com. Call.